Hi, Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi, Jacob. 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 Hi, Gotta go to baseball practice. We'll have fun. Everybody having a good morning, a good start to December? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. You want to listen to some music while we get ready for people to come in? No. No? Jesus. Yes. Yes, okay. No, please. Yes. I don't want to listen. I don't want to listen to music. We're playing with uh, robots. Let me try that again. Did you guys even hear that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Let's see if any of our other friends are gonna show up. Share computer sound. All right. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. because the extra comments are a lot. <laughs> okay, so hello, hello, hello. Um, welcome to the most wonderful time of the year. It's what, e Easter? Easter time? Christmas time. There you go, Christmas time. I don't know about you, but I look forward to Christmas all year long. It's such a fun time when we get to celebrate with our family and friends. And everything gets covered in lights and decorations, and it's awesome. <laughs> um, now, can you tell me why we celebrate Christmas? Gemma, can you tell me why we celebrate Je Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday. Yeah, does anybody have anything to add to that? Bailey, you just giving me a thumbs up this morning? <laughs> Jacob. Um...
I forgot. All right. So Christmas means it's celebrating Jesus as God's greatest gift, right? So you were on the right track, Gemma. It is, well, I don't think Jesus was actually born in December, but it's just a time for us to recognize that Jesus was born and he is God's greatest gift. So all month long, we're going to celebrate the gift of Jesus and talking about the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, you see, Christmas may be big and fancy and exciting, but it's also simple. See, it says simply Christmas. So there's no assembly required for this holiday. Jesus is the greatest gift we've ever been given. So to start us off with a little fun, I thought we might take something that we see a lot of during Christmas. Do you see it behind me? Stockings, right? So the Christmas stocking hanging with treats and goodies in it, it's such a fun part of Christmas. I don't know about you if you guys get tons of stuff in your stockings, but as you can see, I've set up 24 stockings so we can play da 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 Christmas stocking matchup. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So here's how we're going to play. You've probably played some kind of matching game before, like memory. Mm -hmm. So while in the stockings, 1 through 24, we have 12 sets of matching pictures. These are pictures of things you might see at Christmas time. So you guys are going to take turns, and you'll tell me a number, and I'll I'll turn the stocking around to see what the picture is. And then you're going to choose another stocking and you'll try to find the matching picture, right? So if you don't get a match, I'll put both pictures back around. Then it's another person's turn. But if you do find a match, I'll put your name on it and you'll get that point. And that's how it works. And then we'll keep going and going until everybody has done till they're all matched up, all right? So the first on my screen is Eliza. So Eliza, you're gonna tell me a number. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, any number? Yep, any number. 16. 16 is, dun, 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 dun. 16 is an angel choir. Okay, pick another number. Uh, 24. 24 is the, it's a fairy Christmas box. All right. So I'm going to go to my next person. No matches there. Bailey Powell. Tell me a number. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Bailey. There you go. Tell me a number, Bailey. Ten. Five? Ten. Two? Okay. It's a candy cane. Okay, we're trying to find the other candy cane. Pick another number. Five. Five. It's, who is that? Um, Rudolph a reindeer. Right, okay. We're gonna go to our next person, which is Gentry. Tell me a number, Gentry. Uh, 16. 16. Angels. Uh, seven. And seven. It is shepherds. So, okay, Gemma, it's your turn. I can feel us getting closer finding a match. Gemma. One. One. One is a snowflake. Tell me your another number. Nineteen. Nineteen is baby, baby Jesus. All right, Jacob, unmute yourself, buddy, and tell me a number. Four. Four is bells. Mm. Tell me another Fourteen. Fourteen. <gasps> Angels. We've had that one before. All right, Rebecca, it's your turn. Fourteen. 
Ten. She already knows. Fourteen is the angels. And what else? Sixteen. She got a match. All right. If you get a match, you get to go one more time. But then we move on. Go. Seventeen. Seventeen is lights. What next? Twenty-two. Twenty-two is, uh-oh, we've seen him before. Shepherds. All right, Ruben, your turn. Twenty-two. He wants to go with the 22. You should have probably guessed the other number first. Five. Can you sit down, Rebecca? Five. Five. Five is the reindeer. All right, we're going back to Eliza. Sit down, you two. Eliza, tell me a number. 13. 13 is a star. And nine. And nine. Is a snowflake. All right, Bailey Powell. Your turn. Thirteen. Did you say thirteen? Yeah. Okay. Thirteen. And what else? Six. Six? It's a snowman. All right. Jet three. Uh, 11. 11 is Rudolph. Uh, Mama, can't you? Five. Mama, can't you? You got a match, Gentry. Good job. Woohoo! Get to go again. Tell me another number. Uh, 20. 20. Candy cane. Eight. Lights. All right, Gemma, your turn. 22 and seven. 22 is Shepherd. You sure you seven. want to? Okay. She got it. Way to go, Gemma. We're getting some matches now. Okay, tell me another one, Gemma. Twenty. Three. Twenty. Oh, twenty. Did you say three? No. Twenty. Okay, twenty is a candy cane. And two. And two. No. Got another match. Okay, tell me another number. Three just fell off the thing. All right, I got it. All um, right. I'm going to go with 13. She's going with 13. That's a star. And are you Just guess. Seven. Seven. Seven? There is no seven. Nine. Nine. Is a snowflake. All right. What did you say? Rebecca, it's your turn. Thirteen. She's going with thirteen. It's a star. And six. And six. 
It's a snowman, Jacob. Six is the snowman. All right, Reuben, your turn. Eight and 12. He's going eight. You want eight and 12. 12. That's a star. We've had the star before. All right, um, Maggie, you guys know what we're playing? We're playing memory. So tell me a number. And I can't hear you, so you may have to type it in. 23 and 2. 23 and 2. I don't think that's what they said. Did you say 23 and 2? 23 and 6. 23 and 6. That's a snowman. And, oh, look. Grant is on a roll. Tell me another one. Grant, you have another turn since you got it. And He's going 12 and 13. Man, Grant, he's on fire. Okay, Grant, tell me another one. Uh, 19. 19 and it's baby Jesus. Four. Four. It's bells. All right, Maggie, your turn, dear. Shout it out loud. Yes. You say 10? Yes. Okay. It's a Christmas tree. 21. 21. It's baby Jesus. All right, Eliza, it's your turn. Don't forget to unmute yourself, dear. There you go. Uh, I'm going to 21 and 9. 21. And 9, that? It's a snowflake. Almost, dear. All right, Bailey Powell, it's your turn. Nineteen and twenty-one. Nineteen and twenty-one. So we got baby Jesus and baby Jesus. Good job, Bailey. You get another turn. Four. four. You want four? Bells and what else? Eight. Eight. It's Christmas lights. All right, who's next? Is it Gentry? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Bells. And four. And four, she got them. Tell me another one. Uh, tw tw the bottom one. I can't read it. It's 27. 24. Yeah, 24. 24 is a Christmas present. Uh, and 17. 17 is Christmas lights. Gemma, it's your turn. Eight. Eight is Christmas lights. Seventeen. She got it. Tell me another number. Uh, nine. Nine. Ah, is a snowflake. And one. That's another snowflake. Good job. Tell me another number. Eighteen. 18 is a Christmas present. 24. And it's another Christmas present. Good job, Gemma. And then you obviously get the last one. Three and ten. Yeah. Which was our Christmas trees. Good job, guys. Way to go. 
Yay! I would say that Gemma got a lot of matches today. Way to go on the memory, guys, but it seems like you all did really good with remembering where things went to. So, right now, we're going to do our Bible story with Lee, and we're going to do it a li little different today. So, but she's still with us. Ruben, get up now. Get up. Thank you. All right. So, I'm going to share her on the screen real quick. All right, here she comes. Can you guys see her? Yep, okay, here we go. Hey everybody. I'm excited to share with you the most amazing promise that God gave us, the promise of a savior. At Christmas, we celebrate how God kept his promise when he sent his son, Jesus. One of the most famous decorations we see at Christmas is the Christmas tree, like this one over here. Well. Maybe that's not exactly like this one because it's a little dark and empty. So let's fix that. It's a little better. You know, through history, things didn't always go well for God's people. There was a lot of darkness, but God always provided some light in the darkness, some hope that he would help. The Bible is full of famous stories about God and his people throughout history. God was there with his people at the very, very beginning of their story. We call that creation. God was there with, with Moses. In his and as he parted the Red Sea and he helped the Israelites escape from the Egyptians. He was also there with Joshua and the Israelites when they won the Battle of Jericho. He was there when David won against Goliath. We can find amazing words of hope when we read Psalms. And God gave Esther this courage to stand up to her people. The things didn't always go that way for God's people. They sold false gods. Like nations around them did. They tried to do their things their own way instead of what God wanted them to do. They were attacked and bullied by other groups of people. Things were looking pretty dark, but even when God's people didn't always follow him, God would show his people that he was with them, no matter what. God sent leaders like judges to rescue his people when they got themselves into trouble and cried out to him for help. He sent kings to rule over his people who, and the kings who loved him, like King David and King Josiah. He sent leaders, he sent prophets like Elijah and Isaiah to speak his truth and to hope, to speak his truth and hope to the people. Okay. Still, God's people kept trying to go their own way. So God allowed them to be captured by other nations. Even when things got really dark and it was hard to see how it would all turn out, God showed his people that they could trust him. God had made an important promise to his people. He would one day send someone who would rescue them forever. In fact, there are hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about God's promise to send a Savior. Check out one of these promises God had written down by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 
A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. He will rule over all of us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and the Prince who brings peace. So a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us, and he will rule over us. He will be wonderful and mighty. He will rule over us, and he will call wonderful advisor and mighty God. He will also be the father who lives forever in the parents that brings peace. The Israelites had to write, wait a long time, but God's promises about a savior came true when he sent Jesus to live on earth. Jesus was sent as a child, as the Son of God. He is our wonderful advisor, our mighty God, and our Prince who brings peace. That's what Christmas is all about. That's why we celebrate. We celebrate because of the hope that Jesus brings, and that hope will light up our lives forever. God always kept his promises, and throughout his big story, we know that when he says he will do something, he will do it. And one of God's most important promises of all was his promise to send Jesus. He kept that promise to send Jesus, our Savior. Did you know that there are lots of promises about our lives that God has made? He promises to be with us all the time. He's always working for our good, no matter what. We can know that God will keep these promises because he always keeps his promises. We can have hope and when we put our trust in him. That's what Christmas is all about. It's remembering that God keeps his promises. It's all about celebrating the greatest gift, his son. So we can have hope before, because God keeps his promises. That's our bottom line. When things don't go your way, when something happens you didn't expect and you're not sure what to do, when life seems dark and scary, you can always have hope. You can remember that God always keeps his promises and he kept his promise to send Jesus as our Savior. Since he always keeps his promises, he'll also keep his promise that he's always with you and that he is always working for your good. That's why you can always have hope. Let's pray and ask God to help us. Dear God, thank you for reminding us during this time of year you keep your promises every single time. Thank you for the promise of Jesus. Thank you for the hope that we have in him. Please help us remember what you did for your people and for us when you sent Jesus to be our Savior. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lee. All right. Morning. So, so God is our promise keeper, guys. So, um, through the words of Isaiah, God promised that he would send a savior. God promise came true when he sent Jesus. God was faithful to keep his promises in the past, and we know he will keep his promises today and in the future. So, our bottom line, as Miss Lee said, is... We can have hope because God keeps his promises. So say that with me. We, we can, can have, have hope because, because God, God keeps, keeps his promises. promises. That's right. Sometimes things happen in life that we just do not understand. Sometimes we feel anxious or scared about what will happen in the future. But we can always have hope because we know that God keeps his promises. And we can trust God no matter what. So Christmas might look a little different this year. It's been a tough year for a lot of us, but the real meaning of Christmas is something we can celebrate no matter what. It's not about the great gifts or even delicious treats. Christmas is about celebrating the gift of Jesus. When you remember how God sent Jesus for you and that he keeps all of his promises, you can have hope in any situation. So our memory verse for the month is Luke 2.1. It says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
So all month we're going to work on memorizing this because it's a great reminder of the real meaning of Christmas. So if you have your device that you can play Kahoot on, go ahead and get it out and I will pull up this. Did you guys get it open? Yeah. Okay, hold on a second, please. I'll get it for you. So we're going to play. My tablet's going to take um, like two or three minutes to get on. Not that long. It's going to be a second. We're coming, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Nikki, can you wait a little bit because a uh, bite of uh, uh my Chromebook is about to die, so my sister's get uh, a charger. Yeah, hurry up, get that charger, girl. She has it. All right. Rebecca, where did your name just go? Give me the phone. You can't let it go blank like that. Get over here. Don't let it go blank like that. Come over to the other side of Ruben. All right, awesome, Jake. We're getting started. All righty. True or false? Christmas means celebrating all the gifts we get from our friends and family. True or false? False. You guys all got that right. Thank you for listening. It's not. All right. Wow, Rebecca got in kind of, oh, awesome, Jake. You're right on Rebecca's heels. All right, let's go to the next one. What was the most amazing promise that God ever gave us? Was it that we would live happily ever after, that we wouldn't have to eat vegetables, that he sent his son Jesus, or that we would never have any problems ever again? Oh, see, I didn't even have to get to the end of the question. You guys knew it. Good job. Yes, it's that he sent his son Jesus. Awesome Jake and Grant coming up and Eliza. Woo-woo. True or false? Throughout history in the Bible, things did not always go well for God's people. True or false? That is true. Things just kept going wrong. Maggie has the highest answer streak of three. Awesome Jake, Grant, and Rebecca are in first through third. True or false? Even during the hard times, God always provided some light in the dark times, some hope that he would help them. 
through. He always gave some sort of light to them that he would end up helping them. And they just needed to pay attention. Bailey has a streak. Woo -woo. Awesome drink, great. And Rebecca, quiz. Who was there at the very beginning of the world? Was it Adam and Eve? Was it Coyote? Was it Moses or was it God? Who was there? It was, well, we're talking about the very, very beginning of the world. And I know it kind of got a little tricky with Adam and Eve, but it was God who was there. He was the one that created Adam and Eve. Awesome Jake has the highest answer streak. Grant and Jake and Rebecca. True or false? Throughout history, God's people, the Israelites, promised to love and obey God, and they always kept their promises to him. It was false. God's people, we, we have that little thing that we call a sin problem, and they didn't keep their promises back in the Bible time, so, and neither can we sometimes. All right, moving on. True or false? We can always keep our promises to God. We can always keep our promises to God. The answer is false. We again have that sin problem like they had back in the Bible times. We've got that same problem and we have problems keeping our promises. Alrighty, quiz, quiz, quiz. When we read the Bible, who did God send to help his people when they were in trouble or cried out to him for help? Judges, kings, prophets, or all the above? If you answered any of those, I gave you a point. So it was all of the above. He had, he sent judges to them. We have the book of Judges in the Bible. He sent kings to them like David and prophets. We read about Isaiah this morning. So it was all of them. And if you answered any one of those, you got a point. So no worries. All right, true or false. The Old Testament that's before Jesus talked about God's promise to send a savior to his people. That is true. We just read about it this morning. The book of Isaiah was before Jesus and he talked about him. You guys are doing awesome. True or false? We can have hope because God always keeps his promises. God always keeps his promises so we can always have hope no matter what happens. All right. About less than a minute. We celebrate Christmas because the hope that who brings? Mom brings, Jesus brings, dad brings, or Pastor Mike brings. Awesome. You guys all got that right. Hopefully we won't get cut off, but here's the podium. Good job, you guys. Ribbons in third. Awesome Jake in second. And the first is woo, Rebecca. All righty. Awesome job, you guys. So we will be back here next Sunday at 11 o'clock. And thank you for coming. And we'll see you guys later. Bye. Have a good later. Week. Later. Have a great week. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.